Thank you for joining us today. Won't you join us by liking our Facebook page and subscribing to our YouTube channel. We'd appreciate it. Good morning and welcome to our Sunday School lesson. My name is Reverend Theron L. Jones I and I'm an Associate Minister at the Greater Queens Missionary Baptist Church located in Chicago, Illinois at 6758 South Wabash Avenue where our pastor is the Reverend Kevin Wood. Let us open with a word of prayer. Father God, teach me your ways that I might be more like you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, and thank God. Our lesson for today is entitled, A Resume of those called. The devo devotional reading is coming from Psalms, the 25th chapter, verses 1 through 15. And the background scripture for the lesson is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 through 31. And the main thought of memory verse is 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 28 and 29, which reads thusly. And base things of the world and things which are despised have God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, 29, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Paul wrote both his letters to, to the Corinthian church why he was in Ephesus from AD 51 to 52. There, there was no, there were various issues within the church which had been reported to Paul. One of the issues with the visions were individuals were following or in elevating various leaders above others. You know, that's why in the, the book, if you read 1 Corinthians, say say uh, one follows Apollos and one follow, but he only got baptized in one name. So we all the same trying to do the same work in the name of the Lord. In, in our lesson today, Paul reminds them that he has come for one reason and one reason only, to preach the gospel and not to promote others or himself. And anybody that's called by God is supposed to follow that same mantra. Nobody is to be promoted or Celebrate it. God will give you the glory that he wants you to have. The, the word preaching in the Greek word means logos, which also translates to word and those who consider the message of the cross foolishness are lost and perishing in their unforgiveness. In verse 18, say, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Because by Jesus dying in such a way was considered a shameful and foolish way to those not following the gospel. It was considered shameful. Crucifixion was saved for the most hardened criminals. So they crucified you totally out of disrespect. It was the worst death any human could be subjected to. But to those following God, it is the means by which 
we are saved through the power of God. Because, see, human-based wisdom does not compare or match up to the wisdom of God. Those who don't accept the gospel, their understanding will be destroyed if it does not include the word, the works, and the ways of God. 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, and the 19th verse. And also in our lesson today, verse 20 said, Where is the wise? Whereas the scribe, the scribe was supposed to be the expert of the law. He said, God said, where are they? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolishness the wisdom of this world? If you, if you have not the wisdom of God, you have nothing but foolishness. I don't care how many letters behind your name. Or whatever. If it doesn't include the wisdom of God, you're down on the wrong track. Now, Paul asked the question rhetorically, where is the wise, the lovers of wisdom? These was the philosophers. These was the astronomers. These was the theologians who believed and leaned on the wisdom of of the world and not on the wisdom of God. But but see, Paul now asks, he says, where's the scribes? According to, I said before, they're supposed to be the expert of the law. They, they, they were in opposition with Jesus, with the God. And as taught many times in the Bible, Job chapter 12, verse 17, Ecclesiastics, chapter 1, verse 16 to 17. Daniel, chapter 1, verse 17. The pursuit of wisdom is for not meaningless. If it does not include God, because all wisdom, true wisdom, comes from God. It says it right here in the word. And in the book of James, it said, if a man seek wisdom, let him ask of God. That's as clear cut as it can be. It says what it says, and it is what it is. Though the word wisdom is the same in God's word and the world and means the same, the only perfect wisdom, again, comes from God because he knows the end from the beginning. Isaiah 46, verse 10. The wisdom of the world does not include or can it lead to a knowledge of God. Verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believed. And wisdom that does not include God is truly not wisdom at all. Because if God is wisdom, and then if your wisdom don't include God, then you have no wisdom. It's the only means by which man can be saved. You have to have the wisdom of God. You have to recognize who God is. You have to accept, believe, and confess in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And God used the foolishness of this world does not even acknowledge God, let alone accept him or believe that they need to be saved. They think they can do it all on their own. And see, the Jews, they, they constantly demanded that Jesus show them signs. Let's go to verse 22. For the Jews required a sign, and the Greeks 
seek after wisdom. The Jews, they always wanted Jesus to show them some Jesus to show them some signs. He performed some miracles to prove that he was from God, and the Greeks sought wisdom because the, the cross was too simple to them. It, it couldn't be that simple that if you just believe in this man that died on this cross, that you could be saved and have eternal life forever. So they were too smart to, to even understand that. And actually, they were educated idiots. And because of the simplicity of the cross, accept, believe, and confess. And because of who Jesus was, he, he was poor. He came from a house of a carpenter. And where he was from, he was from Nazareth. It says in the scripture, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And how he died on the cross, an embarrassment. This was a stumbling block to the Jews because it was totally against everything they perceived about the coming Messiah. Verse 23. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. And, and let's go right to where and to the Greeks total foolishness. Because of all the preconceived ideas of how God should act in history. Everybody was waiting for this man to come on a white horse with an army behind him, dressed out, decked out, to just slay everything. But it wasn't about that. And the simplicity of it messed up with many people. As the ones that accept it. And see, now Paul states, let's go to 24. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greek, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Paul now states that God has called all Jews and Greek. It doesn't matter. God calls everybody to come to him. To salvation, to those who will receive it as confronted by the Holy Spirit, Romans 10 and 17, as to our sinful state. Both are to embrace Jesus, not because of miracles, signs, or wisdom, but through the power of God and the wisdom of God, and not that of man, through your faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Because as we go to verse 25, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. You know, God don't, he don't hide his wisdom or power from anyone. If you seek it, you accept him as your Lord and Savior, and you seek him, he'll give you everything he got. He don't hide it. He don't play no tricks with it. He says, seek and you shall find, knock, and the door shall be open. Say, ask, and you shall receive. Because it seems too simple for us, some humans, to just accept that. It's just too simple. But the foolishness and the weakness of what seems to be to the world is wiser and stronger than anything of the world. And as we go to verse 26, for ye see you calling brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not my, many mighty, nor not many noble are called. Now Paul states the case to the Corinthians to look at yourself and those among you. Was the church filled with those this society looked upon as being wise? No. Was the church filled with those who was considered noble or mighty? No. Because of their inability to accept the gospel. No matter how much power you got in this evil, sick world, ultimately, all power belongs to God. 
Verse 27, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Again, God used the least against what the world called the best. And he speaks, Paul speaks to how, you know, the ways of God do not live or go with the ways of the world. And that he can take whatever he wants, foolish, weak, or otherwise, and do whatever he want to do with it and achieve those goals according to his will. And, and see, God, by using the base, the base, what's a base? Base is just a regular Joe Blow, a regular old anybody. And things of the world, as we go to the memory verses, 28 and 29, and base things of the world and things which are despised, things looked down upon, as God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to not things that are. Verse 29, that no flesh should glory in his presence. And by using regular things of the world versus the noble, which is supposed to be elite, according to the world, to know, to show that what God offers to the world is of him and him alone and has nothing to do with any man anywhere. Therefore, let no man take credit Boast because the presence is not of the man, but the presence is of God. And no man can glory in the presence of God. Truly, no man can glory at any time because if it was not for God, there would be no glory. We're going to do the last two verses, 30 and 31. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, 31. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. And all that God offers us, wisdom, righteousness, sanctification and redemption, come because of him and him alone. It has nothing to do with any human effort, past, present, or future. Therefore, if you're going to glory about something, you got to glorify the Lord because there's nothing else to give glory to. And as we come to the end of this lesson, you know, though to the world, the cross was shameful. It was a brutal affair, a death reserved for the worst, criminals of the times. There seemed to be the people that there was no victory in the death of Jesus. It was shameful, it was weak, and it was foolish. It made no sense to the world. But God chose that which seems weak and foolish to the world to bring salvation to this sinful world. If, if, if not for what the word, the world considered foolish and weak, there would be no way for man to be reconciled to God, to bring forgiveness of our sins and everlasting life. And once again, on behalf of our pastor, Reverend Kevin Wilkes, we thank you for being a part of our Sunday school lesson. If you'd like to contact the church, you can dial us at 773-488-2991. And again, we just thank you for being a part of this morning's lesson. God bless and God keep us all. Amen. Thank God. Thank you for joining us today. We hope and pray that this Sunday school lesson has made you want to learn just a little bit more about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
Why don't you join us for our Sunday school at 10 o'clock, morning worship at 1130. We look forward to seeing you there. Until then, tell somebody you love.